Razabani for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. With me on Zoom today, Dr. Hitman himself, Artif Daniel. Artif, uh, how are we doing? I'm good, thank you, uh, especially with the uh, current situation and uh, very surreal situation we're all undergoing. Uh, not bad, not bad at all. Thank you. Before we how about you? yourself? How you been? I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. Not too bad. Strange times in the boxing world. Um, but we, we all are going through it and we're just fighting towards, hopefully, peaceful yeah. times in the near future. Uh, before I proceed, just want to apologise on camera. I know we've been trying to arrange this for a couple of weeks now. So yeah. we finally managed to do it today. So uh, it. We, we got there at the end. We did indeed. Artif, obviously, um, you've been in the boxing industry for, for many years. Before we talk a little bit about that, um, how has the last few months been? I know you, you work as a dentist as well. Um, everything came to a standstill a number of months ago. Uh, did, it, did it catch you off guard as well, the whole coronavirus and the pandemic? Yeah, it was a very strange times, especially in, in the dental world. Um, obviously, routine dentistry had stopped. Um, I was also working with um, some emergency dental services as well during that time. So my work was continuing. Um, initially, we were just doing telephone consultations. So providing uh, what we call triple A's advice, um, antibiotics, analgesics or antibiotics. So it was, it was very difficult. Um, we just had to adapt. And, um, and then obviously there was a, a national shortage of PPE. Uh, obviously, understandably, hospitals were being prioritized so um, eventually, once, um, you know, obviously we had access to at the emergency dental services, we were then able to see patients uh, who were in pain, who, um, you know, obviously it was, it was very, it was very difficult times, obviously, for these patients who, many people who had, um, you know, were in, in, in uh, intense pain, had infections, swellings. So we began to manage those and um, obviously prioritize and triage them. And um, so, yeah, so obviously, you know, in that capacity, I was working throughout the lockdown period. Um, so it was, it was obviously, you know, dentistry had changed and it has still changed. Obviously things aren't completely back to normal uh, as of yet, uh, but hopefully slowly, slowly, you know, things will sort of resume, but it's, it's been difficult. Um, you know, the, one of the emergency dental services, the regions that I work with, they normally would sort of get, uh, 200 phone calls a day or so, uh, and they'll be triaged accordingly. Uh, during this pandemic, uh, the phone calls were up to about 2,000, 2,000 a day, which, you know, which just, you know, astronomical really com in comparison. So it's been a lot of strain, you know, on the uh, dentistry, but, you know, slowly, surely, uh, we, you know, we're, we're getting back, we, you know, we, we'll get there hopefully. From a fighting perspective, I know you're a man that's traveled the world and, and had competitive fights, Spain, Mexico, America, across the globe. Has it been hard to kind of maintain your fitness and your training, kind of not knowing when that next fight potentially is? Yeah, I think all boxers can relate. When you're training, uh, I mean, I've definitely, thankfully, kept ticking over during this period. Uh, when you're training and just ticking over, it's, it's very different to when you know you have a fight date and you've, you know, you're, you're obviously then having a whole camp geared to that fight day is very different uh, so it's uh, but I think the main thing is obviously that I'm someone who who always um, is sort of you know keeps sort of my weight uh, around sort of my fight weight sort of thing and um, I'll always I'll always be active I'll always take over I don't smoke I don't drink alcohol so I always maintain that side of things and um, but you know obviously with no fight day, it's it's different, and obviously there's no sparring, which is a huge, uh, you know, integral part of training. Um, you know, sparring is just obviously it's just, it's it's most closely similar to your you know to fighting, so it's um, it's something I really miss. I really enjoy sparring, um, so that was a huge factor of training, which I couldn't sort of embed. But at least I was ticking over uh, and doing what I could, you know, in terms of my running, my road work, my um, shadow boxing, uh, bag work, just doing what I could really and a bit of strength, obviously strength conditioning work. Obviously we saw boxing return in the UK uh, a couple of weeks ago with Frank Warren in the first show. 
Uh, Eddie Hearn goes live next week uh, with Fight Camp. We've seen Top Rank in America. We've seen PVC just announce a huge schedule over the coming months as well. But from what you've seen so far, when fighters walk out to the ring with the ring walk music, that buzz, the adrenaline, that now is, is taken away from you. You're, you're literally walking into almost yeah. an empty arena. Is that tough for fighters mentally? Uh, you know, it depends. It, it can be. Uh, I mean, you know, I think it really depends on the fighter's mentality. Um, I mean, someone like me, especially where I, where I fought under cards and there's not been much crowd as well, it wouldn't bother me. And I'm the sort of person where, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't care if there's if it's just the judges there or if it's a full crowd there. I, I, you know, it really wouldn't bother, bother me. So, um, but I think some fighters, they do you know, thrive, obviously, for that, uh, you know, obviously the audience and, and the whole buzz, the atmosphere. Uh, and it obviously spurs them on as well. I, 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 you know, I don't want to name, but I think there's a couple of fighters who have kind of gone on record to say that they don't want to fight in such circumstances and they want to wait for uh, the crowds to be you know, allowed back in and be fighting in front of an audience. Um, so it does. And, and obviously Showtime made a, 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 an incredible announcement with these huge, huge fights. Uh, and I saw them and I'm like, these are really, really top, Top tier fights that they've they've got on, and, um, and it was a shame. Obviously, this is all going to be behind closed doors, and um, it, it's it's no doubt that there will be some an element of an effect. Um, but you know, we will just you know wait and see. But obviously, you know, it's just it's 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 just surreal, you know, unprecedented circumstances and times, and we've just got to adapt. We can't just stop. Uh, we just have to you know, adapt and change, change, uh, you know, the way we, uh, we do certain things and just carry on really. You know, obviously these are, you know, obviously, you know, people's careers, their, it's their livelihood. And, uh, you know, obviously we've, we've got to, we've got to carry on. I was like, you know, if we was just to, without 2020, you know, boxers weren't, weren't to be active, weren't to have any fights, it would be detrimental to, you know, to our careers, you know. So it's, um, you know, we've got to carry on and just adapt in certain ways and hopefully god willing eventually things will return back to normal and we'll, 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 we'll be boxing you know in front of crowds as well you're a man of many trades obviously we spoke about your dentistry but as for your boxing career how do you uh, assess it to date yeah i mean uh, I've, you know as my record stands is 17 wins three losses uh all three of my losses were you know under controversial circumstances but that's a story for another day but you know, it is what it is. I wanted to push on and uh, really, um, you know, get into sort of tougher fights. But it's very difficult because obviously with myself, I don't have a promoter. Uh, and without a promoter, it's it's difficult in, in terms of being able to have, uh, you know, sort of going to, um, you know, 50-50 fight on a, on a, on a, on a, in a fair way. Um, I mean, for example, when I, I, I was very fortunate to have... Um, obviously come back from my uh, trip from Mexico um, and the US from, I was there from September to, um, till Christmas. And um, so obviously the fights that I had there, um, I wanted to have sort of, you know, a, sort of a high level, um, but it's very difficult because it was done, you know, a lot of, a lot of what I've sort of achieved in, in terms of my fights, what I've done, a lot of it has been back through knowing people, having, you know, sort of friends helping me out, uh, organizations and whatnot. And it's almost like, look, you know, it's a friend of mine. Can you, can you, can you put him on, you know, as, 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 a, as a favor, really? So the thing is, is that, for example, when I fought in Mexico, I had, had two fights. They had, had a couple of cancelled, unfortunately, but I had the two there. And I wanted to fight higher uh, quality opposition. But at the end of the day, um, I was getting paid. they taking care of my opponent, you know, expenses are being paid. and you know, it's, it's obviously it's done as a favour, really, um, through so obviously mutual friends. So, you know, I couldn't complain too much. And obviously, you know, like if I said, for example, I'd want to fight. Oh, how about you know this person here? You know, the, you know, with so you know with winning records and stuff. Um, they're like, oh, this person's from it's from another city. It's going to take. It's going to be difficult. This and that. Obviously, they're being very polite and stuff. So it's one of those circumstances. It's one of those situations. But. Um, and that's like I said, that's the difficulty without having a promoter. Um, and obviously, there's been 
you know, times where I've been given a call, but it's been last minute where I've been given a few days notice. It's like, well, hang on a second. If I'm, if I'm not much, much, if I'm not that dangerous, then give me a full, give me a full camp. Give me uh, you know, give me uh, a proper notice, proper camp, allow me to have a proper camp and uh, you know, whatnot and stuff. But you know, it is what it is, but, but you know, thankfully I'm heading in the right direction. Prior to this, I was planning to have, you know, two, three fights. I was looking to have uh, my US debut in September, uh, working, you know, with um, Team Canelo and Ryan Garcia. And um, so, unfortunately, obviously, that's obviously put the spanners in the works. Um, but as it stands, I'm, I'm, I'm going to continue with that. And what I'm going to do is have um, two, three fights, um, keep busy fights as they were, and um, and. We're looking at um, a fight in December potentially in the US. Is um, there's there's a big uh, championship card in the US uh, that they're looking at the West Coast. And again, things have changed obviously with COVID. But as it stands, it's you know it's going to be behind closed doors, uh, televised, and um, and that's yeah that's that's what I'm targeting. That's what I wanted for a long time to be honest. I wanted to go into uh, tough fights, 50-50 fights. And just as long as it's on a even you know even playing field, as long as I get you know um, adequate time for a full training camp, and as well as as, as long as I get paid well uh, and um, properly, but and and that's that's really it sort of thing. That's what I sort of asked for. But thankfully, God willing, that's what I'm looking at now. So hopefully, I can sort of pay uh, you know dividends and then eventually. What are the kind of career goals that you mentioned there? Get paid well, having those big fights, those big nights. There's belts out there as well. What is kind of the career ambition? You know, I just want to take one fight at a time. Uh, I don't want to look too far ahead. And and that's what I've been doing all this time, really. Uh, you know, I've been, you know, going against the grain. There's been a lot of times and circumstances and, you know, things that have gone against me. But I've sort of rose above them. You know, when I had, you know, obviously my, my last loss, I was six and three. And I didn't look back, and you know now, you know, thankfully, I'm 17 and three. Um, so I just take one fight at a time. Um, obviously, you know, with with boxing, I mean, generally in life, really, but you know, obviously, boxing, especially, you know, it's, if you if you know the right people and you're in the right place, you know, you can, you know, it can obviously work in your favour. So I'm I'm very fortunate to to have that, and um, obviously I. I work hard. I'm very dedicated. Um, even alongside my dentistry, I always, you know, work things around my schedule. Uh, wherever I am, you know, I'm always, obviously, you know, always, obviously, I know I've, I've got to train. If I'm in different cities, if I'm in different countries, I'll always be training. I'll always gear things around my training. So, uh, um, you know, people say, oh, "How do you manage to do that?" But you know, I always say that there's, you know, there's a difference between, you know, um, having time and making time for something. You know. Um, so, you know, if, as long as you, you make time for something, then you'll be able to find it. If you're just trying to find time, you won't be able to incorporate in your schedule. So, um, so that's, you know, you know, like I said, I want to have obviously these, you know, two, three fights, as, as I mentioned before, and I can have this, this, um, my U S debut, uh, you know, tough, uh, tough fight, whether it's against a, a top prospect or if it's, a um, you know anyone else whatever uh and then obviously see how i fear then then i could take it from there and stuff so but like i said you know one fire time and that's what that's always been my uh my thing i don't know many people in the industry who have great relationships with floyd mayweather and canelo you're one of very few people that i know that have that um what are they like you know them on a personal level both of them i think you've got to know canelo more recently and floyd was kind of in the early stages of your career but Yes. Firstly, how did those relationships come back with both of those top fighters? One retired, one currently pound for pound. Yeah, you know, I was fortunate to to have known Floyd Mayweather since 2012, before before he constructed the TMT, the Money Team. So um, again, you know, Danny Williams, you know, British boxing legend, he's one of my closest friends, and you know, so through him, I had some connections there with with Mayweather Mayweather Boxing Club, and um, you know, as so 2012 was my first trip there uh, when I trained there uh, first, and you know I was I was received well, I was welcomed, um, and then I was fortunate to have 
uh, to have done three camps with Floyd Mayweather, his, uh, his camp with Canelo, his second Maidana uh, fight, and his Berto um, camp as well. So um, obviously during that time, obviously you know got to know him very well, and he, he's just a lovely, lovely guy. Honestly, what you know people always say, oh, he appears quite you know brash and boastful on camera, but it's all for camera and show. He's a lovely, lovely guy. There's a lot of things about Floyd which aren't broadcasted. Uh, you know, normally sometimes in small, when something high profile happens like this, George Floyd, uh, obviously the incident, the murder, he, he paid for the funeral, he's paid for Joe Frazier's funeral, he's paid for uh, Hernanda Hernandez, um, uh, Hernandez's funeral, you know, he, he, and he does these things and they've only come because they're sort of pro high profile events that have taken place, people know about that's happened, but he's always been like that. He's done, he's done loads of things for me. Um, and I'm and I'm I'm a nobody, you know. And he's, you know, he didn't have to do anything for me. He has done. He's done. He's done a lot for a lot of people. He's got a big heart. I tell you one thing, you know, for what he done for his even for his fighters. I don't know any promoter who do this, but when he fought Robert Guerrero, and that was like the first official uh, kind of the May with the promotions uh, fight where he also fought himself. Uh, after the fight, he took everyone, all the fighters, and you know, the sort of one or two people with with those fighters took the whole team, um, all expenses paid for in Miami. You know, as a as a, as a, just as a just as a gift, just a, you know, as a small little you know thing for his team. You know, who who does things like that? You know, he's um, he's somebody who values friendship, values loyalty. Uh, he's got a big heart. And he does a lot for charity. So that's that's Floyd. Um, I mean, you know, he's in the past. He's wished me well for my fights. Again, why does he have to do that? You know. But he's he's just a he's a lovely guy. There's a lot more to him than you know than all the camera and, and the money and all that's shown on on the cameras and stuff. Mm-hmm. Canelo, yeah. Get, get, yeah, he's he's just a, he's again he's he's a, he's a brilliant guy. He's um, he's a hard worker. He's very disciplined. And I was fortunate to be, uh, you know, I was I was I went to the, I was there with him at the gym. Uh, so I was at the fight. Uh, his Canelo, his sorry, his Kovalev fight. And uh, you know, that was, you know that was a, that was incredible. I was there ringside for that. Uh, it's an incredible night. And then a couple of weeks later, I was there at the gym with him. And uh, he was just he was just obviously still training. He was in training, taking over, and it just showed that you know what are uh, these guys? These are high profile. These were obviously mate Floyd was the face of boxing once upon a time. Canelo is today's face of boxing. And these guys are very disciplined. They live the athlete style, the athlete's life. You know. Uh, they're very disciplined, and the reason why they are on the top of the game and why they they are there for so long is because they're so disciplined, um, and they're always, you know, they're always around the gym. They're ticking over. Um, they always look after each other. Uh, they, they, they always look after themselves. Uh, and um, but yeah, and it, you know, Canelo get very humble. I, I think, and obviously after that, I have fought on the, I fought I had another fight in Tijuana on the Julio Hunt on the Julio Caesar. Chavez undercard with Travieso, and uh, he FaceTimed me just to wish me well. You know, he doesn't have to do that. You know, at the end of who am, who am I? So, um, but it's um, it just speaks volumes of his character and what he's like. And uh, you know, the, a lot, you know, you know, another great guy for sure. A lot of people said many years ago it was the teacher versus the student when Floyd took on Canelo and. Well, he beat him quite well, quite easily. If you look back right now, I think I gave Canelo maybe one round in that fight. Um, yeah. Floyd's always kind of teased us with comebacks. You know, I'm going to come back. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Oscar De La Hoya, I think, would love Canelo to jump in with Floyd at 160. Oscar told me that himself yeah. a few years ago. So, if they fought today, Floyd came back. Who wins that fight? Floyd and who? Canelo. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I don't see Floyd coming back. Floyd's not coming back. Floyd's only just he's messing around. He'll just fight MMA guys in boxing. Um, you know, Floyd's a smart guy. He's a businessman at the end of the day before anything else. And Floyd's done and achieved everything. You know, there's always going to be a new young lion knocking on the door. Always. You know, we've my question was every- if, if you're saying he's definitely not, but I said if he's coming back, you're trying to divert from the question. <laughs> I mean, politician, eh? He wins. <laughs> no, but you know, come on, Floyd's forty odd. Canelo's 
he just turned 30 a few days ago. He's at the peak of his career. And obviously, aside from all of that, there's a huge size discrepancy. I mean, Canelo's campaigning at 168. Floyd just went, he just did 154 just to make, just to get into the record books. He's not really a 154 fighter. He was a, he was even as a 147 fighter, he was more of a natural 140 fighter. So, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> you diverted the question. I like that. Um, just want to touch on Ryan Garcia. I know you know him very well as well. Um, as you would know as well, social media has taken over the world over the last few years. Mm -hmm. where, where now, yeah, it's almost like you don't need to promote anymore. You can promote yourself through channels and through following. He's been very vocal yeah. with his relationship with Golden Boy and more specifically Oscar de la Hoya. Is there anything yeah. you can tell us about Ryan and that relationship with Golden Boy? Because even now till date, it feels like there's a lot of tension there between some fighters and, and Oscar de la Hoya. Yeah, I mean, I mean Ryan himself, I, I, I'll be honest with you, because before, obviously, now I'm very good friends with him and his family, uh, and I was there and they're taking care of me, and um, obviously I was training, working with his dad as well, uh, Henry, uh, great guy, great, great trainer. Ryan, prior to this trip, I didn't really um, sort of, you know, I obviously saw some of his footage, just, uh, you know, as it were, and I saw... I was like, okay, you know, you can fight. But I was like, okay. Um, but I didn't really sort of have a very, a very high opinion of him in terms of the boxing, um, in, in the boxing perspective. Um, but I changed my opinion seeing him up close. We're training together. Very very disciplined. I was actually very surprised at how disciplined he was. I'll be honest with you, I, I was kind of one of those guys who saw him as so glamorous on his social media, you know, very much of a pretty boy and uh, gets a lot of attention from the, from the uh, US and Latino uh, females and he's got obviously a lot of female fans. So uh, I kind of thought, okay, maybe he just, you know, dwells in a little bit and then comes out and just enjoys himself and locks back in for training camp like a lot of fighters do. Not this guy. I swear to God, he fought. He was, I was trading with his dad, Henry, at the gym. Every day, this guy would be coming to the gym. Every day. And he, he has to, he's a, he's a workaholic. He's a workaholic. And um, he trains hard. He trains, uh, you know, and he, his, I was very impressed with him from a boxing perspective. His hand speed, his hand-eye coordination, his power for, um, obviously, in, in his weight category. His ring IQ, he's actually very, very smart. We're watching fights together. We watched the Joshua Ruiz rematch uh, live as well uh, at his house and stuff. And he's got, a very, he's got a very high ring IQ. He's a very intelligent fighter. So... These things, I was like, I was like, and I, I, I actually, I, I'm, I'm a very straightforward guy as well. And I, and I said to him, I said, right, you know what? You know, prior to this, I thought, you know, I thought you were a good fighter and stuff. And I said, I, I tell you what, I've been very, very impressed with you, you know. And I, and I told him where and stuff like that. And this, this guy, you know, I think he's going to go very far. I think he will go very far. I think there's, there's some of the fights, some of the big fights they're talking about with him, you know, being and stuff like that. And people are sort of writing him off. But, uh, you know, you know no, he's he's going to be a force to reckon with. Honestly, I'm not just saying that just because of my friendship. Honestly, very, very, very talented fighter. He's he's a special fighter. I do this finally. Um, I got to get your thoughts. A huge announcement was made yesterday: the return of Iron Mike Tyson and Ro Roy Jones Jr. in an eight-round yeah. exhibition fight in, I believe, it's in California on the 12th of September. I believe that's correct. Um, one, both are in their 50s. I think Mike last fought nearly 15 years ago. Roy yeah. fought about two years ago. Um, strange little exhibition fight happening. Yeah, I've got mixed feelings. I mean, I was one of the one of the biggest Mike Tyson fans that were. I used to, every time I used to fight, I used to wake up. Oh, I used to stay awake, really, actually. Stay awake until the early hours. Uh, and, um, you know, I, when I was, you know, growing up in school and college, 
no one can say anything about Mike Tyson in front of me. I, I'm not. I'm not going to stand stand there quietly. I'm, you know, <laughs> so huge fan. So for me, it's a bit of a buzz. Obviously, when I was watching him, seeing all these training videos coming out, which were going viral, I was like, wow, look at you know, he's 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 phenomenal. Um, yeah, he's still looking great. Uh, so obviously, there's that excitement and buzz. You know, a bit of nostalgia uh, seeing him back and stuff like that. But obviously, there's also the fact that look. You know, they're much older, especially Roy Jones. He's had a lot of battles. He's had a lot of, work, you know, wear and tear. And you do worry about the health of fighters when it comes to, to, uh, come to this level. So I had mixed feelings, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I, there was part of that I didn't really like. I was like, look, you know. But I think anyone who knows Mike Tyson, anyone who's met him, knows he's, 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 he's a lovely guy. He's got a big heart. And he's not someone who, he doesn't have that vicious, you know, the animal instinct that he, he had in the 80s where he wanted to uh, uh, you know, knock people out knock people out, and um, drive their nose bone up into their brain, you know, as it were, one of his infamous quotes. Uh, you know, that's all obviously growing up and obviously that tenacity that he used to have in, in, in the ring uh, and that rage. But uh, yeah, obviously he's such a calm down, you know, relaxed, relaxed guy, almost a shadow of himself from a, from a, a you know, character, a personality perspective. Can you pick um, so I don't think I don't think he's going to be that vicious Mike Tyson. That's what I was trying to say. I don't think he's going to be trying to knock knock Roy Jones Jr. out. Uh, I think it's obviously it's an exhibition. So it's, it's, it's charity. I think they'll be getting into the ring. Uh, I mean, if he, I think if he does hurt Roy Jones, I think he'll step back. You know, he's not. He's you know that's why. So I think that's why. I, I, you know, I don't think it's going to be as, um, and it shouldn't be in that in in in, in, in done in that in that. In that way, in that capacity, but I think it's it's still be it's still be a great spectacle for sure. You know, two legends, uh, and you know, the, you know, getting on and as for charity as well. So it's good for boxing. Everyone's talking about it. You know, there's people who don't even watch boxing. They'll be tuning in to watch Mike Tyson because of, you know, they used to watch his, you know, the heyday of Mike Tyson back in the day. So it's uh, it's good for the sport. I like the way he, my, I like the way he does my question. Um, what was it? <laughs> there's gonna be there's gonna be a winner. There's gonna be a winner and a loser. So. Who wins? Yeah, but 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 no, there isn't. Though. That's the thing. There's no judges. No, but one hand, one person can get his hand raised at the end of that. We saw Floyd Mayweather have an exhibition fight in Japan. Yeah, yeah. very different up. though. That judges though as well. But yeah, no, I, I think uh, yeah, I think Mike Tyson. I think Roy Jones been through, uh, obviously. There's obviously there's there's the um, the the, the side, mm -hmm. the power, mm -hmm. the speed element, and uh, Mike's a lot bigger as well. And I think. And obviously, Roy Jones had, has had a lot of wars, and it's it's been a really sad state of affairs to see his the end part of his career. Um, and he was just so magical at one point. At one point, but yeah, I think if it was to be actually if it actually was to be competitive, it, Mike Tyson would no doubt win. But I don't think it's going to be like that. I mean, they're not they're not having any judges, and uh, in terms of also Mike's demeanor, how he is as well, in, you know. You know, in today's times, he's very relaxed. You know, he does a lot of his, he's got, you know, he's always smoking cannabis. He's a chilled out guy. He's got his cannabis farm as well. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I think it's going to be a bit, it's more of an exhibition, more for charity and stuff like that. But if it was to really, if they were to really go for it, Mike Tyson, hands down. I, I, I think Mike Tyson still has the ability to beat many of today's heavyweights. I don't think the top tier ones, you know, not, you know, um, but just some of the today's heavyweight fighters, uh, Mike Tyson still for four rounds would give hell to a lot of them fighters. Uh, maybe obviously not the top tier ones, of course, the champions and stuff without, you know, without a doubt. But uh, that's how I still, that's how highly I still rate Mike Tyson. <laughs> uh, well, we look forward to that exhibition, something for the fans. Um gutted that obviously there'll be no fans in attendance. They'll be on pay-per-view, but everyone can tune in and something. Yeah. Exciting to look forward to. Uh, I'll yeah, of uh, you jumping on this eve this afternoon, giving me a little bit of your time. Um, no, stay well, stay, stay safe. Um, and we look forward to your fight news in, in, in the upcoming. Yeah, week. thank you. No, it's good. I'm just, it's, I'm glad. I'm just back in full flow training. I'm sparring. I'm sparring. Uh, I've recently, I've been. I'm sparring. I mean, some some of the guys that helped me in the UK. Obviously, Danny Williams. I mentioned. Uh, Morris Core, Manchester camp, Champs Camp, obviously, um, you know, friends of mine sort of helped me and stuff and, you know, obviously give me advice. And I've been 
sparring over there now as well recently in champs camp two top amateur guys uh, the northwest champions and um, you know they were in the nationals so i've been doing sort of four rounds i've been doing eight rounds so four rounds with one and then the fresh one jumps in and stuff like that and then i'll come out and do another four, four in the bag to maybe 12 and just finish up with exercise so it's nice to be in full flow i'm just still obviously just you know speaking with my team my team are speaking with a few people we're looking at um having obviously i mentioned two three fights uh Europe and obviously when the UK starts to open doors as well, I can get that fight and hopefully get sort of um, ideally sort of three fights before December time and target that US fight, God willing. So, so it's 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 nice to have obviously that target now and just working towards that. So I'm really excited and hopefully God willing can finish 2020 with a bang. Absolutely, Artif Daniel for IFL TV. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.